All right, guys, let's talk to Sixers here. They're going to host the Celtics tonight, which everyone's thinking, yes, this is going to be sick, but newly acquired James Harden, uh, he's expected to be out through the All-Star break with that hamstring injury. Uh, Celtics, meanwhile, have won eight straight, gotten a boost from their deadline acquisition of Derek White. So Chaser Faye Boston's win streak will continue tonight, Matt. This is going to be sad for me because I've uh, been on the Celtics for months and months and months, and I think we finally have reached the point where they're overvalued. So... I don't know that they're going to lose tonight, but I don't think they're a good bet. We're up to about minus two and a half right now. You have to lay about minus 130, minus 140 now on the money line. I'd rather bet Philly. Like, I think this should be a really even game. If James Harden were playing, then Philly's probably favored. Um, these are even teams, I think, roughly with Harden playing. Without him, Boston's a better team, but on the road, I think that kind of neutralizes the advantage they have. So I really do think this game should be right around Pickham. Uh, the Celtics are better, but the home court advantage in Philly is a big deal. So it just seems like with the winning streak, the Celtics are a little overvalued right now. And it's just, you know, it's it's physically painful for me to talk about it because I've just been yeah. so happy about the Celtics over the last eight wins. But I feel like this could be the spot where the win streak finally ends. Okay, Nick, um, would you feel like betting the Celtics money line tonight, dude? I don't think I would. I, I'm on the same track. I, I saw that line this morning and I immediately checked to see if there was some word that Joel Embiid was questionable or maybe Tobias Harris was sitting out like kind of an odd line. Uh, and obviously, you know, Philly sacrificed some depth in that James Harden trade. So they, they won't have Harden. Uh, obviously, they won't have Drummond and Curry. So maybe that's the concern here. But yeah, I th I'm with Matt. I think this should be closer to a pick with Philly at home. So, you know, I, the Celtics have been playing really well. You know, they've won eight straight. Derek White, nice addition. Still not exactly sure what the Celtics are thinking long term here. It didn't feel to me like they were a Derek White away from all of a sudden being a true <laughs> title contender. I don't I don't think I would have given up two first round picks to get Derek White. But, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's a nice short term boost for Boston. I would still chase Philly on the money line, though. All right, Gary, and would you chase Philly on the money line? It seems like that would be the smart bet. I mean, this line just seems off by a couple points, as Matt was talking about. I mean, Boston, I've, they've kind of finally won me over. I mean, I was at the start of this eight game winning streak. You kind of go through it game by game. It was like, they beat the Pelicans. They beat the Heat with no one playing. They beat the Magic. They beat the Pistons. They beat, who else? Orlando, Orlando Charlotte, Brooklyn with no one playing. I was like, all right, this is like kind of a fun schedule quirk thing. Yeah, they're outscoring teams by 19 points per 100 possessions, but this is like the easiest amalgamation of teams I've ever seen. But the wins over Atlanta and Denver were really nice. Derek White fit in, played a really nice role off the bench. Uh, I will say to the Celtics' credit, they are 9-4 and four ATS this season as a road favorite. Philadelphia has not been good against the spread at home, but that's not enough. Those trends aren't enough for me to just look at this spread and say it's off. And, and I'll, I'll bet Philly tonight.